Hey everyone. All right, well it's David here from Spark Ninja, and uh, the public draft for the 18th edition is out now. You may have already had a good chance to have a look at it. We've gone through it, and what we're going to do now is just introduce the the key changes in little miniature videos. This is going to be introduction part one. Then it'll be a part two, and we'll do a few more. And then what we're going to do is blow them up when we get closer to release. I don't want to do too much for large. Um, information gathering if some of these are going to change but we're going to cover the key areas um, as we go through now the illustration here the blue book um, this is the early early suggestion that we have from the IAT's own website I was anticipating a different color but maybe it will be blue we don't know but this is what we're going with for now so what do we know from the introduction in the, co in the draft we've got a publication date, I think it's something like the 28th or so of June, it will be issued ready for the 1st of July 2018, so it's a year away now. We're going to have that six month window from release to application, so there's a six month period for you to obtain a copy of the document, read the document and then obviously prepare to apply all new design, all new installations to the standard from the 1st of January 2019. It says in here that installations designed after the 31st of December 2018 will have to comply to this new standard. Big question, will you have to retrain? Uh, well, to be honest, I mean, y yeah, it's it's a headache, it's frustrating. When, up when updates and regulations occur, you probably will take it upon yourself to actually watch a YouTube video or get a copy of the book and you'll read it, you'll interpret it and you'll come to some decisions on how to work with it and that is all that you really need to do that's what we call CPD the, the problem is when you come to a site or an employer who has this um, this approach of you can't access this site until you have this ticket and the likely, likelihood will be you'll need to obtain the 18th edition I know that the JIB are planning on applying that for all of their existing gold card holders. So I think um, Steve from the JIB has just done a, a blog lately about the fact that 40 odd percent of existing JIB gold card holders are still 16th edition. So there there is a need to improve updating on these standards um, and obtaining qualification is the way that people, you know, it's the way people assess that. Um, so yes, retraining will be needed, I'm sure. City and Guilds will definitely introduce a new course, probably something called a 2383 or something like that, once they get uh, their their grips on the final draft. This will probably... Uh, I, I reckon that the new 2383 course, whatever it will be, will be out probably in the August or September. They're never, they're never quick with City and Guilds. They're always a little bit late, which kind of puts us train providers in a, bit, a little bit of limbo. Um, with regards to training, if you need to obtain the one regulations training now, you may be thinking, oh, maybe I'll hold off, maybe I won't do it. Um, that again is maybe a decision you can't take. The empl your employer may need you to update now. Um, training providers may offer you some kind of um, benefit if you return to them later on, a bit discount on an upgrade or something. Personally, myself and the sitting guild track company that I work with what we're doing is anyone from July who obtains the 70th edition we're going to offer them free retraining on the 18th edition via digital means um, and all they have to do is pay for a reassessment city and guild fee which would be something like 50 pounds and obviously the time to do the assessment when the 18th edition comes out but we'll provide them with all the information and all the resources so they won't be in a position where they're unable to obtain and pass that straight away with no problem but we'll be preparing them for that but retraining will probably be an inevitability here so let's let's have a look um, part one I'm just going to do part one the next video will be definitions not a lot is introduced in part one really we've got a new section in the inclusive section of scope and that is uh, 110.1.1 and what is that size uh, 17 or so and that is the onshore unit of electrical shore connections for inland navigation vessels 
Um, that's there because we have a new section in part 7, section 730, um, called Offshore Units of Electrical Shore Connections for Inland Navigation Vessels. We're going to cover what they are and what these changes are in our part 7 video, but just, just to preview on it, um, we're talking here about inland vessels, so we're talking about things like narrow boats and uh, you know th things you're getting canals and stuff, not things that are on international waters. So you've got slightly different external influences here. You'll have domestic persons obviously connecting the set the the supplies to narrow boats down the river, while someone on an offshore ferry probably wouldn't be a a not at work householding person. So the levels of control and quality are different. So we have this new section that's been harmonised over. We've also got a new part. Now anyone who's trained with me has probably heard this, I've been mentioning it for over a year now, that there's there's a part 8 coming in the pipeline. I, I saw it in the HD in the Harmonized Standard in, in Europe and I knew that they were planning on trying to get around it, but the application of this energy efficiency section is just unavoidable. There's been suggestion of having it as a separate code of practice. Again, the problem with codes of practice is, is uh, many persons just get the regs and they don't really go for the other codes of practices but this has to be in part of design work um, and so it's in there it's not going to come out I'm sure of that it's a good section I have studied it already um, I've got a book here which I advise that you think about getting um, or you can find some information online I'm going to be doing a video on this as well probably in the next two weeks or so it's a green book so forgive the green screen but it's the it's the Designer's Guide to Energy Efficiency of Electrical Installations. I appreciate that was reversed, but it's um, an IT kind of practice. A lot of the annex in this and stuff is how the IET's Part 8 is now interpreted. So it's a good little resource if you want to look into it further. The actual... Let me just get the wording here. Just fry this over to you here. The actual wording from it is... This is a completely new part. The worldwide need to reduce the consumption of energy means that we have to consider how electrical installations can provide the required level of service and safety for the lowest electrical consumption. Part 8 enables the client to specify the level of energy efficiency that is measured applied to an electrical installation. Installations can also be awarded points for energy efficiency performance levels. The new part covers several energy efficient areas such as lighting, metering, cable losses, transformer losses, power factor correction, and harmonics. I'm not sure how the points system works yet. I'll be looking into that and I'll be introducing that when we do a part 8 section in this little series that we're doing. But um, there it is, black and white in the introduction section. So there is a part 8, and because there's a part 8, under 120.3, which is the fundamental principles of Chapter 13, it's now a requirement in the fundamental principles to comply with Part 8 as well, so they've thrown that in there. Other little change in Part 1, very minor change, 133.1.3, used to say that where equipment is to be used in not in accordance with the regulation 13311, or is used outside of its standard, the designer or other person responsible for specifying installation shall confirm the equipment does provide at least the same degree of safety as that afforded com by compliance. So the departing um, reg, really. We've now got the additional sentence in the 18th which says, Such use is to be noted on the electrical installation certificate specified in Part 6. Obviously some people maybe haven't been doing that or something. And that needs to be more um, defined but it's all about adding departures if you choose to actually need a departure in your installation. But um, I think that's all for part one, isn't it? Yeah. That's introduction and part one. I'm going to do a part two video, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven, all as separate videos for the following sections. And I'll see you in the next one now. Cheers.